Hi, this is Lacey Knight from Angel City Derby Girls and Knight Strong. In roller derby, we often have to move side to side, front to back, so single leg strength is very important. I put together a few examples for you to work on single leg strength wherever you may be and with whatever piece of equipment you may have. Obviously, there are more variations in what I show, but hopefully this will get you started. Enjoy. One quick note before we get going. These are mostly examples of unilateral movements, or movements where one limb is working independently at a time, while bilateral movements, like the squat, have more stability and can generally be trained stronger, unilateral movements require greater balance and more midline stabilization, especially when the weight is overhead. Okay, we're starting here with one of the more generic single leg strength exercises, which is the step up. You can use a box as I'm showing here or a bench. Any other surface that you have available to you to change your height is gonna make it harder or easier depending on where you're at. Next, we're gonna start adding weight to make it more challenging. You can use kettlebells or dumbbells, holding it in the front rack or on the shoulders. Right here I'm showing a double kettlebell front rack, which can be challenging on the core and the shoulders. And then going into a dumbbell overhead press, which also is a little difficult depending on where you're at. Lastly, we're going to talk about the barbell step up. You can do the front rack pulling from the ground, or as I'm about to show here, put it on the back rack, and step up from there. It makes it easy to add weight when you use the barbell, so something to consider. Anything for the barbell also allows you to pull from the rack. So if you don't want to pull from the ground, that's fine. And then end with this one, the overhead step up. It's the most challenging. Next, we're going to get into lunges. I show static and walking lunges in the varieties that you're about to see, but I definitely prefer walking lunges. It feels more relatable to how we move on the track and how we actually move in life. So if you can choose that and you have the room to do it, I would definitely recommend it. A lot of the same varieties of weights that you saw in the previous section will apply to this one. You can use dumbbells, kettlebells, or the barbell. You can hold it in the front rack, the back rack, or on the shoulders. You can do many varieties of walking forward or doing reverse lunges, as I'm showing here. Then we can start getting into overhead, just as we talked about with the step ups, the overhead varieties uh, provide the most difficulty for this core and for the shoulders. You can pull from the ground, or you can start to pull from the rack, or you can pull from elevated surfaces if you're doing dumbbells or kettlebells. Not everything needs to be from the ground. Again, when it comes to the barbell, this allows you to add more weight. So if you're really going for like a max effort, I would recommend using the barbell. It will allow you to see where your progress is coming or if you're making gains on one leg over the other, or you can actually see if one leg is stronger than the other. I think that I've found more maxes that way with the barbell as opposed to with the kettlebell, there's just not as many varieties where you can add half pound plates or five pound plates. Again, with the barbell, you can do the front rack, the back rack, or the overhead lunge, which is what I'm about to show here. I don't do the reverse lunges with the overhead, but you can do that as well. Nothing holding you back from that. I really enjoy the plate overhead lunges um, to do at the track because we have a lot of plates, but not a lot of barbells. Makes it a little bit easier to program in for the league. Lastly, here we're showing the Cossack lunge, uh, which is definitely relatable to roller derby. Moving laterally back and forth, um, really challenging how deep you can go into that lunge and pushing off of that heel every single time. Adding weight here can get pretty spicy, especially if you're not used to challenging yourself in this direction. And I found that a lot of people get very sore from this, so I wouldn't do it too often. Have fun with it though, and uh, I would challenge you to do both, front and lateral. Okay, on to deadlifts. Whether or not you believe it, deadlifts can be done with only one leg. We're starting here with the easier variety, which is putting the weight on one side and the same leg doing the deadlift. You can switch it up and have the opposite arm do the weight, but it just depends on how your balance is feeling or where you want to challenge yourself that day. So try both and see which one feels better. You can use a dumbbell or a kettlebell. Either is fine. Start to play around with whether or not that opposite foot is going to float behind you or if you're going to have it touching on the ground. Touching on the ground is going to help with your balance. If you're feeling like your ankle is not quite ready to hold all your weight, 
or stand up and down with the weight, then you want to put that foot down. But if you want to challenge your balance and stability, float it behind you and try never to touch it while you're doing your reps. Once you get past the single arm, go to the double arm. You can add more weight. This will actually feel a little easier because the balance is even between both sides. And then you won't feel like one side is kind of pulling you to the other side. Make sure you're touching the weight to the ground each time with the kettlebells. Dumbbells only go to mid shin. Next, we're adding the barbell for the single leg deadlift, but I would encourage you not to do this one unless you feel very comfortable with this movement. You should feel this predominantly in your hamstrings and not in your back. If you are starting to feel tightness in your back, you are probably rounding too much and you need to reset your form to ensure your legs are doing the majority of the pull. Next, we're moving on to the pistol squats. This is one of my favorite movements to program for roller derby skaters because it mimics the plow stop pretty well. If you're having difficulty holding your balance on one leg while the other one is floating in front of you, you're probably finding some challenges with executing the plow stop at the efficiency level that you'd want. You can play around with the height as I show, or you can start to add weight, which can be difficult if you're not very strong with your single leg strength. My left side is weaker than my right, as you can see. You can put the weight out in front of you, which helps with your counterbalance. And then you can start to move into kettlebells, which makes it difficult because the weight is a little bit more on your shoulder and it does not feel as easy as say maybe a dumbbell would. Lastly, the overhead squat. This is probably the most difficult. I would not recommend it for beginners. Okay, the last movement we're gonna show here are the split squats. The points of performance to look at here is whether or not that front leg shin is vertical. We don't wanna see the knee extending past the toe. Otherwise, we're not setting our knee or ankle up to recruit the muscle groups we're trying to target, and that in turn doesn't translate to the functional movement we would do when skating or squatting. I find that most people feel awkward reaching back to find the box behind them, so you may need to jump your foot out occasionally, and you will see me do that throughout the course as I'm demonstrating this movement, occasionally moving my front foot forward just to make sure that I'm in those points of performance that I just talked about. You can use dumbbells or kettlebells holding them in the front rack or on the shoulders. You can use one or two, either or is fine. Just make sure that you're finding a way to challenge yourself consistently and a way that you can keep adding weight depending on what you have available to you. Lastly, we're showing the barbell movement. I often do split squats uh, with a barbell pulling from the rack. I actually find that it's easier to do it that way, especially if I'm trying to reach behind me to find the box or Usually I'll use a bench, um, not a box. So whatever you can find to make sure that you're at the right height and that the front foot is pushing itself into the right position, that's what you should use. If you put the barbell in the back rack, you can add more weight. So if I was looking to go for a max effort, that's what I would do. Okay, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Night Strong Training at gmail.com. Otherwise, enjoy and keep it spicy.